Hi guys, Hobbs Hobbs here. Today we're going to be talking about whether the ball spawn will have anything to do with the story of Baldur's Gate 3. Now this is a touchy subject because for many the ball spawn saga rightly ended after Throne of Baal and we can debate until the cows come home about how the saga defines itself. Is it the story of the ball spawn or is it a story of achieving divinity in general? Certainly the themes and some of the potential names for Shadows of Arm might indicate the latter. And so the prophecy came true. However, arguably the original games are remembered for being THE Bullspawn Saga, regardless of other themes that the writers may have wanted the player to consider. So we meet again. The Bullspawn Saga has finished, and like all popular franchises, reviving a previously finished saga can have interesting results. It was similar in the sense that I said to Ryan, I'm so surprised how you see Luke. Hey, but I'm excited for Baldur's Gate 3, I think it's going to be great. But regardless of how you feel, the Ballspawn saga, canonically, whatever that word might mean to Wizards of the Coast, didn't actually finish after the Throne of Baal. Murder in Baldur's Gate, an adventure released over a decade later, is the actual end to the saga. Kind of. But we'll get onto that later. You see, in Murder in Baldur's Gate, Baal returned when Abdul Adrian and Vikang killed each other in the centre of Baldur's Gate. The last two Ballspawn died and Baal came back, rather spectacularly I might add, as his avatar rampaged through the city. Yes, Abdul Adrian, the one from the novels, and who also has his own card in the new Magic the Gathering set, Battle for Baldur's Gate. Despite years of us angrily telling Wizards of the Coast over the internet about just how much we hate this canonical character, they decided it was best just to go ahead and cement him into the story. Am I so out of touch? Fortunately, it seems that the other parts of the book where Abdul Adrian is found are not canon. Thank God. When her eyes caught his, he saw rather than heard her gasp. Abdul sat without looking at the chair. He couldn't pull his eyes away from hers, and she did nothing to discourage him. Her full lips twitched like her husband's. She was nervous too, and though Abdul would never come between a man and his wife, he couldn't help hoping that she was nervous for different reasons than Khalid was. So according to Murder in Baldur's Gate, all the Ballspawn are dead, and no, I don't think that the grandchildren of Ball are Ballspawn. They'd be more like Ball Spawn Spawn, and their children would then be Ball Spawn Spawn Spawn, and their children would be Ball Spawn. It might be fair to say that there is some lingering magical power in the ancestors of Baal. After all, we were almost a demigod by the end of Shadows of Arm, and we were a first generation Ballspawn, so it's only likely that the second generation might have something flowing through their veins. I said earlier that Murder in Baldur's Gate was kind of the end to the Ballspawn saga. Well, that's because in Descent into Avernus, the following passages are written. Since the time when the Ballspawn Saravok plotted to start a war between Baldur's Gate and Arm as a path to claiming Baal's power, awareness of the Lord of Murder's children has grown. Baldur's Gate maintains a grim draw for Ballspawn. What does that mean? Is it still a grim draw? Also on page 166, it says, Every now and then, rumours surface that a political figure is a Ballspawn. Are those rumours grounded in fact? Is this just ignorance being displayed by the general population, or is there a genuine chance that some politicians could be Ballspawn? Descent into Avernus does have a bunch of dead three cultists running around the city, but Baal cultists and Ballspawn are very different things. The latter are worshippers of Baal and not his children. Has the city now just become so synonymous with Baal that the legend of the Ballspawn is intertwined with the city itself? If we look at some of the books in Early Access, the way the Ballspawn Crisis is spoken about is as if it's completely over. His children, the Ballspawn, were responsible for a conflict that changed the face of Faerun forever. Eyewitness accounts of the Ballspawn Crisis. Note that it doesn't seem ongoing, but rather it had a huge effect upon the current world that our characters reside in. In this AMA, Sven does say that the game will have meaningful links to the originals, but that they're taking their own path. That does beg the question then, why does Descent into Avernus say that the Ballspawn are still drawn to the city of Baldur's Gate? Is this a mistake? I'm betting it could be. However, this model of the Slayer, Baal's avatar, has been data mined. Is this because we come across Baal ourself in the game? It's quite possible. But will it be used for a flashback? Will it be something someone can transform into willingly? There will be numerous Baal cultists in the game, and the Dead Three are a big part of the plot, so I can certainly see the Ballspawn being a big part of the game in terms of their legacy that they've left behind, but for them to still be around wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. 
Okay, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, then do please give me a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!